Hello everybody, it's me again, Jafar. So today we will look at new topic, absorption costing and variable costing. When I refer to variable costing, I refer the same meaning as marginal costing. So let's have a look. So what Cameron is saying here that the only cost of driving my car on a 200 mile trip today are only 12 pounds for petrol that's what he's saying so basically he's saying if i want to drive my car for example go to london so this is only uh, it costs me 12 pound and this is considered to be variable costing or marginal costing as i mentioned but now what josh saying he said how about the other costs we have other costs such as we have car payment, okay? That's car payment, that's every day almost 10 pounds. That's a month, 300 pounds. How about the insurance, the 60 pounds you pay every month? Why you didn't consider them as part of variable costing? This is absorption costing. So what is Cameron saying to Josh? Actually, you are wrong. Oh, why? Because he's saying that I have a car payment and the insurance payment even if I don't make the trip. So this is a variable costing. So as you see now, there are arguments between uh, Cameron and Josh in terms of the variable costing and the absorption costing elements. So now the question is, who's right and who's wrong? How should we treat the car payment and the insurance? So this is the topics for today. It's an interesting topic. It's about absorption costing and variable costing. Let's have a look. The first thing you need to consider here that absorption costing does consist or cover all the cost or we call it them the product cost. Okay. Let's have a look. When it comes to absorption costing, we call it the full costing system, yeah? It does include direct material, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead and fixed manufacturing overhead. Can you see? So now everything is related to manufacturing the product. To make the product, it is considered to be product cost under absorption costing the only way we classify it as a period cost only the selling and admin expenses and selling and admin expenses is not related directly to manufacturing the product selling and admin such as um, advertising etc etc now as you see here under absorption costing we have the product cost which we call it man the manufacturing cost and we have the period cost which call it the non-manufacturing cost so remember these two terms product cost and period cost now again this slide is really important so you need to put it in your head right now okay because because you are going to use it all the time during this lecture so in terms of variable costing or marginal costing, when you calculate the product cost per unit, you need to include the direct material, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. As you see, the fixed manufacturing overhead is not classified as a product cost here, but is classified as a period cost here. Can you see the difference? So the main difference, as you see, between the absorption costing and the variable costing that um, fixed manufacturing overhead is included under product cost um, under absorption costing but is not included under variable costing however is included in the period cost can you see the main difference here between the variable and the absorption costing so now Let's put some numbers and see how it works. Right, let's have a look. This example, uh, Swansea Co. produces a single product 
with the following information. So you need to look and you need to remember these figures because we will use them across the lecture. So if we look here, you will see that number, number of units produced annually 25,000 units. We have the variable cost element. We have direct material, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead per unit equal 10 pound. We have selling and admin expenses three pound per unit. Remember this. In terms of fixed cost, what we have here, we have the fixed manufacturing overhead, 150,000 pound, and also we have the fixed selling and admin expenses, 100 thousand pound so remember these figures and let's have a look here first of all you need to uh, calculate the product cost per unit again I'm repeating myself the first point here you need to calculate the product cost per unit and if you go back to the first slide the product cost per unit under absorption costing is 16 pound why 16 pound because it does include the variable costing element which is the material labor and variable manufacturing overhead and according to the question is 10 pound and also it does include the fixed manufacturing overhead six pound but how did we calculate this very simple the fixed manufacturing overhead 150,000 pound you need to divide it by number of units produced 25,000 units, that's equal six pound per unit, the fixed cost per unit. So if you add them together, so that's um, 16 pound. So 16 pound is the product cost per unit under absorption costing. Under variable costing, you need to include only what? Only the variable element, which is the 10 pound. Do we include the fixed manufacturing overhead per unit? Not no we don't why we don't because if you remember we classify it as what as a period cost remember this please so now let's continue with this question to prepare the statement uh, of profit or loss under the two methods so what you need to do you need to prepare a statement of profit or loss under the two methods absorption costing and variable costing for first year and the second year now let's have a look here Swansea Co had no beginning inventory we don't have any beginning inventory that's easy peace of mind um, they produced 25,000 units and from the 25,000 units they sold 20,000 units for this year so they sold um, the unit for 30 pound for 30 pound let's have a look now and prepare statement profit or loss if we start with sales, easy, how, how many units they have sold, 20,000, and if you multiply it by 30, this is 600,000, easy. So now sales minus cost of goods sold or cost of, of, cost of uh, sales. So what is the formula for cost of sales is the beginning inventory, which is zero. Do we have beginning inventory? The question was clearly saying that no beginning inventory. Add cost of good manufactured. Cost of good manufactured is how many units they have produced. They have produced 25,000 units. And each unit, each unit cost them 16 pound. This 16 pound based on what guys? Based on the product cost per unit. The one we calculated in the previous slide 16 pound the product cost per unit under absorption costing now we are doing absorption costing if you add them this is 400,000 pound you need to deduct or minus the closing inventory which is as you see we have a closing inventory 5,000 units why 5,000 units because we produced 25,000 we sold 20,000 so we left with 5,000 and this again you need to multiply it by 16 pound the cost per unit so that comes with 80,000 pound 
So 400 minus 80, which is the closing inventory, that comes with 320,000 pounds. This is the cost of goods sold. And in order to calculate the gross margin, gross margin equal sales minus cost of goods sold or cost of sales. So that comes with 280,000. So, so far, what we covered so far, we covered the product cost element. Now, what we are going to cover, we are going to cover the period cost element. If you remember in the in the first slide, the period cost element, it does, in, it does include all the period cost, which is the non-manufacturing cost. And in the question, if you go back to the question, what we have here, we have here the uh, selling and admin expenses. We have 60,000. Why 60,000? Because in the question, it does tell you that selling and admin expenses, three pound, the variable element, the variable selling and admin is a three pound per unit. So that three pound per unit, you need to multiply it by what? You need to multiply it by a uh, three pound or 20,000 units. Why 20,000 units, not 25,000 units? Remember, now when I say variable and selling uh, expenses, I'm talking about units sold. Do you really, um, do you really invest in selling an admin unless you sold it, isn't it? So that's why we are concerned about selling units and not the uh, units produced. So 20,000 units sold, if you multiply it by three pound, which is the, um, as I mentioned, the variable selling and admin, that comes with 60,000 pound, the variable selling and admin. If you add up that fixed selling and admin in the question, that's 100,000 pound. So that goes with 160,000 pound, 160,000 pound. So that's called the period cost. So again, now, if you uh, minus uh, deduct the margin or the gross margin from uh, the uh, total uh, period cost or total um, selling and admin, so 280 minus 160, that comes to 120, 120,000 pounds. And this is what, what we call it uh, operating profit. This is the operating profit. Is that clear, guys? Very, very simple, very easy to follow, very easy to follow. Now, we've done the, um, the uh, absorption costing method. Now, we will come to the variable costing method. So, what is the main difference? The question you need to ask yourself, what is the main difference between the variable costing and the absorption costing? And as I mentioned in the slide, the first slide, the main difference is about what is about the fixed manufacturing overhead. Okay, let's have a look. Now, if you calculate the sales, same, 600, the same, doesn't change really. But now what you need to do now, you need to calculate cost of sales, the cost of sales, and that include the beginning inventory, which is no beginning inventory. Now you need to add the cost of good manufactured and under absorption costing 25,000 units times 16 pound. But here you need to multiply by 10 pound from where the 10 pound. If you remember when you calculate the product cost per unit in the first slide, you um, calculate it uh, and it happens to be 10 pounds. So the six pound is related to fixed manufacturing overhead. So we are interested now with a variable cost element, which is the 10 pound. So now 25,000 units times 10 pound, that's 250,000 pound. If you minus the closing inventory, which is the 5,000 units, as I mentioned, because they produced 25,000 units, but they sold 20,000 units. So we left with 5,000 units. So 5,000 times 10 equals 50,000. So 20, uh, 250 minus 50 equal 200,000. That we call it variable of co cost of goods sold. 
So now, what happened right now? Before we uh, reach to the contribution margin here, what you need to add up, you need to add up the variable element of selling and admin. Because now remember, remember we are doing the variable costing here, right? So the 60,000, the variable element, if you remember, under absorption costing, we included in the period cost. But here, you included in the product cost. So that's 60,000. So you added that's 260,000 will be the total cost of goods sold. So the 600,000 is sales minus cost of goods sold is 260. That comes with contribution margin equal 314,000 pound. So if you see now there is a, a difference in um, terms under absorption costing, if you remember, we call it a gross margin, but under variable costing, we call it contribution margin. So please make sure that you uh, distinguish between the two methods here. So now we've done that, uh, what we call it, the uh, product cost element. Now we will come to the period cost element. And if you remember, under um, variable costing, what you need to include in the variable cost, uh, or well, sorry, what's called the period cost, you, include, you need to include the fixed selling and admin, and you need to include the fixed manufacturing part. Anything fixed in the question, which is we have the fixed manufacturing overhead, which is 150,000 pound, and you have also the fixed selling um, expenses, selling and admin, 100,000 uh, pounds. So if you add them up together, that comes with 250,000. So 340 minus 250 equal 90,000 pounds. So can you see? Very, very simple. Just the difference, just how to treat it under variable or absorption. Fixed manufacturing hold is the one and the variable sitting and add. So now, if you, if you look here, right, let's compare between the two methods here. If you, ha if you look here, right, the first one, the absorption costing, yeah, this is only summary, yeah. If you look at under absorption costing, we have the cost of goods sold, right? If you go back to the, uh, uh, what we call it, the absorption costing, Okay, where is it? Yeah, this one. Yeah, you can see that 320,000 pound is the cost of goods sold. Now, how is being divided? Very simple, 320,000 pound is divided into the variable element and the fixed element. The variable element, which is the, um, which is uh, a 20, um, uh, 20,000 times 10, if you remember, the product cost per unit equal 10, if you remember, okay? And the fixed element is 16 pound, is, is uh, 16, uh, 6 pound, sorry, 6 pound, because 10 pound goes to the variable and the remaining uh, 6 pound goes to the fixed, goes to the fixed. So 6 pound times 20,000 units equal 120, so if you add them together, that comes with 320. With ending inventory, the same story, right? So we've got, if you go back again, let's go back. I can show you. Uh, yeah, under absorption costing, yeah. As you see, the uh, ending inventory, as you see here, is 80,000. Can you see, guys? Yeah, right? So in this case, if you need to divide it, you need to divide it into two parts, which is the variable element and the fixed element again. So what you need to do, just the 16 pound you divided, 10 pound goes to uh, variable and 6 pound go to fixed and you multiply it by 5,000. Look, very easy. Here we go. Can you see? That goes uh, 50,000 because uh, 5,000 uh, times 10 variable element and the 5,000 times a six pound fixed cost per unit that goes 30 that equal 80 the ending inventory 
and the total as you see is 400 so as you see it's only the way to divide to understand the breakdown uh, of uh, the figures now in terms of variable costing method is the same the same the same completely the same as you see in the variable manufacturing cost as you see not really changeable here can you see same because it's 10 pounds still 10 pounds but what you can see here we don't have the fixed manufacturing cost here under product cost but we have it 150 under what under the um, a period cost can you see here under period cost so the purpose here that can you see is all equal each other 400,000 400,000 equal each other so now the last step after you prepare the two statements what you need to do you need to do the reconciliation very simple very very simple what you need to do you just need to take the profit of variable costing if you remember the 90,000 pound is the profit of variable costing this one and 90,000 and the absorption costing 120,000 the profit so what you need to do here you need to 90,000 the variable costing element you need to add up the fixed manufacturing overhead cost deferred in inventory and this is the main difference in the profit here guys the main difference between the variable costing operating profit and the absorption costing operating profit is the closing inventory a closing inventory remember this please so how to do it very simple the closing inventory which is the units left 5,000 units equal six pound which is the fixed cost per unit equal 30,000 if you add up together the 90 and 30 you will end up with 120,000 pound can you see if there is no closing inventory right if there's no closing inventory happens to be for example after year two so you will expect that the total profit between the two methods will be the same you will see this in year two how it works let's go back let's go to year two now for year two it's the same completely the same stuff it's not really complicated if you understand year one you should be able to understand year two now let's have a look here right um in year two what happened they started inventory beginning inventory 5000 units and of course you know this because they left inventory uh, closing inventory in uh, at the end of year one uh, and this is uh, will be beginning inventory of year two of course uh, they did produce 25,000 units, but they sold 30,000 units. So the information here the same, the same figures available here, like last year. And again, this is um, no change in the structure. Absorption cost it will be 16 pound. There is one uh, missing, guys. So please correct it here. So that's 10 plus 6 equals 16. Please correct it. And we have also the variable cost, which is 10 pound. It's the same structure, no change here. So now let's have a look. And uh, for year uh, two, uh, under absorption costing. So sales, again, if you have, if you've locked, it's the same. So sales now 30,000, because we saw 30,000 times 30 equal 900,000. So beginning inventory here, we have 5,000. So remember time 16, this is the product cost per unit under absorption costing. And you need to add up the cost of good manufactured, which is 25,000 units times 16. And you close, you end inventory is zero. Your minus closing inventory is zero. Why closing inventory is zero? Because if the company produced 25,000 units, yeah? Plus, they have 5,000 units at the beginning of the year as a beginning inventory. In this case, 
the company have 30,000 units available for sales and what happened they did manage to uh, close all of them or sell all of them this is why we don't have an inventor at the end of year two so I expect that the year one and year two profit for two methods will be the same let's have a look so um, if you calculate the gross margin that would be the same as you see it's 900 uh, minus 480 this is 420 and if you minus the, uh, the, the variable selling an admin this is 90,000 because now we sold 30,000 not 20,000 uh, like last year and the fixed elements here is 100,000 pound 100,000 pound so what happened here if you add up them if you add them up together the fixed uh, selling an admin 100 and the variable selling an admin 90 as 190 420 minus 190 equal 230,000 pound remember this 230,000 pound the profit under absorption costing now how about the profit under variable costing let's have a look about this one under variable costing uh, sales no change in sales it's the same um, for beginning inventory what you need to do here you need to multiply by two by ten why by ten because remember the six pound uh, left is related to fixed manufacturing overhead and we do not include it under variable costing in the product product cost element if you add the cost of good manufactured which is again 25,000 units times 10 equal to 50 and then you need to minus the closing inventory we don't have a closing inventory as I mentioned so we have a variable cost of good sold 300 but don't forget that here under the variable element you need to add the 90,000 which is the variable selling and admin that equal 390,000 so 900 minus 390 equal 500 uh, 510 510 so that is the contribution margin yep yeah. So what happened now you need to treat the period cost which is you have the period cost includes here the fixed manufacturing overhead and the fixed admin and selling what we have here we have 150,000 pounds which is the fixed manufacturing overhead and we have the fixed selling and admin 100,000 so if you add them together that's 250 so 510 minus 250 equal to 60 so the operating profit under variable costing equal 250 so let's have a look now and combine the profit for two years let's have a look can you see now in the first year absorption costing the profit 120 if you add up the uh, the profit in year two that's two, 230 that's equal 350 and variable the profit 90 and we have the profit 260 in year two that's 350 so as you see the total profit is the same the total profit is the same and as I mentioned why the total profit is the same for very simple um, very simple um, answer the answer because uh, no closing inventory left because no closing inventory left at the end of year two if happens to be closing inventory left on at the end of year two remember that we will not have uh, the same uh, the, the same profit or the similar profit between the two methods in summary here what you need to lock for the first year what happened in the first year the production yeah, the units are produced was 25,000 units, but we sold 20,000 units. So the production is more than the sales. So what is, will be the effect on inventory? Think about it. Logic, inventory increases by 5,000 units. Logic, isn't it? Yeah, logic, because we will, will, be, will be left with 5,000 units in, as a closing inventory, right? That's logic, yeah? 
So remember, in this case, if this happened, remember that absorption costing a profit would be higher than variable costing profit. And this is logic here. In the second year, what happened? The production was uh, 25,000 units, but the sales was 30,000 units. So now what happened here? So the production was less than the sales, right? In this case, we managed to decrease the inventory to zero. And th that, that happened that we didn't have any closing inventory at the end of year two. In this case, if production, if production was um, uh, less than sales, remember that the profit of variable costing would be higher than, absor than absorption costing. And of course, if you combine them together, yeah, can you see? If you combine them together, of course, you will see that all equal y because now it happens to be 50,000 production, 50,000 um, uh, sales, that equal, no closing inventory here, and of course, well, well, the profit would be equal, as we mentioned in the previous slide, uh, 350,000 equal, 350,000 equal the absorption uh, operating profit, equal the variable costing profit.